Hi guys, welcome back to Sherman's Kitchen. A pleasant good afternoon to each and every one of you. If you're visiting my channel for the first time, I would like to welcome you to my channel. It is five days more, no, it is four days until Christmas. So now I'm gonna be starting all my baking and all my Christmas recipes. So we're gonna start with the black cake. And if you wanna see this version, come on down and let's get started. So today I'm gonna be making one pound of black cake. And to start with the ingredients, I have here one pound of butter, room temperature. I have one pound of brown sugar and very fine grain. So it can be easily melted into the butter. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start melting the sugar and butter together and this is called the creaming process. So Hobby's doing a good job creaming the butter and the sugar and I can see that it's almost there. But now we're gonna start adding eggs and in here I start breaking the eggs. For one pound of black cake, I usually add 12 eggs. If the eggs are really big, you can add 10, and that would work perfect to give you a nice, delicious black cake. And here in the eggs, when I'm preparing the eggs, this is something I always do, because we don't want the cake to taste like eggs. We want it to have a nice, fruity kind of flavor. So at the side of the eggs, there are a little white thing attached to the egg, which is like an embryo. I usually take that out of all the eggs before I add them to my cake. So that's one tip for not having an eggy, eggy cake. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grate some orange zest into the eggs. And I will beat the eggs up a little before I add this to the batter so i just beat the eggs up a little if you don't have orange you can also use lemon zest or lime zest and that would help to make the eggs very nice and give it a citrusy flavor so i'm gonna start adding eggs to our batter and we're going in with just a little bit about an egg, the amount of one egg and that will help to break down those sugar crystals <laughs> So now that we finish creaming the butter and the sugar, we're gonna be adding our flour to the batter and I'm adding one pound of flour. I will also leave all the, all the measurements in the description below. I'm adding here one and a half teaspoon of baking powder. And we're gonna mix that in before we add it to our batter. So I'm gonna sift the flour into the batter just so that we can avoid any lumps. So we're gonna do that easy by easy and then we're gonna fold the flour into the batter. And remember to always measure your flour, sugar, and butter. Once you have the right measurement, you will always get a good turnout. And won't have any problem with the cake after. So now we're going to take our time and fold in the flour into the batter. You can also do it with a mixer. But I find that the flour usually fly up all over. So I'm going to gently do this to avoid that flour flying all over the place. So now I'm gonna be adding our spices. I'm adding one teaspoon of allspice, the ground allspice, and this will give it a very nice flavor. I'm gonna be grating some fresh nutmeg into the mixture. So I have my nutmeg here, and this really enhance the black cake. Now 
now we're gonna mix up that allspice and the nutmeg and it really smells nice already the good thing about the brown sugar it always adds a nice color to the batter even before we finish with the cake so the next thing we're gonna add now is some mix essence you can add any essence of your choice but today I'm gonna be adding our mix essence from Guyana and this is a real Guyana black cake that I'm making today because I will share the reason why it's a real Guyana black cake. So we're going to mix this in again. And now we're going to add our fruits to this. And today, the reason why I'm saying that I'm making a real um, back home Guyana black cake is because I'm using the Tandy's fruit mix. And this one is made with five finger or the carambola fruits. This is soaked in rum and you don't have to add anything else to this fruits. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's already moist, well soaked and easy to go. So once you have this, you don't have to do anything else with the fruits, but just add it to your cake. So because I'm making one pound of black cake, I'm gonna be adding three pounds of the Guyana Tandy's fruit mix and this is the nice five finger and soak with rum let me smell it it smells amazing wow this is really gonna be a good cake and then the second one is going in and you can always add more like if you want to add some prunes some dates and some raisins you can also add that to the cake. I'm going in with my third one now. And then we're gonna mix this up and you can see how moist this is because it's well soaked with rum. Now I'm gonna mix in that fruits into the batter and make sure that it's well incorporated with the batter. So this will be a mixing process here and then I will show you at the end of the mixing what it looks like. So now I finish mixing the fruits with the batter and I have my perfect mixture. My spoon is standing still in the middle. So now we're going to be adding our gravy browning or caramel browning and I'm going in here. I'm using the Mr. Gouda's and this one is good for cakes, chicken, meats and all that. So we're going to go in with a teaspoon of this one. And I'm going to go in with the Caramel Browning, about half a teaspoon. And this is the Chief brand. If you have one only of these, it can work. You don't have to add both of them but I have it so I'm using both today and you want to add and mix and if you don't like what color you're seeing you can always add a little bit more this is usually the right amount for mine so I never have to add more unless you're making a larger amount of black cake so we'll make sure that we mix it in well before we add them to our baking dish so just like that those simple steps that we did the cake is done and looking good i'm gonna add it to the baking dish so i have my baking pan right here what i did i put lightly brush it with some butter and i shake some flour inside to avoid the sticking when we're done and i just put a piece of parchment paper on the bottom so we're protecting the cake from getting burned and sticking to the bottom. So now I'm gonna add some to this pan here. And we don't wanna fully right up to the top. We want to make sure that it's not too thick and have a very good 
amount of room in here to cook nicely and we're gonna shake out the air bubbles and this one is looking good so I'm gonna fill out another dish that I already batter and I had sitting on the side we're gonna add some more of that batter into here just about this much we're gonna spread it out and this is looking lovely first time I'm using the Tandy's fruits from Guyana and I really like the texture of it and that smell of the rum in that cake is very very Christmassy so for the last one for this rest of butter that I have here, I'm gonna be adding some walnuts to that and I have a half a cup of walnuts. I'm gonna mix that in. On this one pan, we're gonna bake with nuts because not everybody eat nuts and we don't want to put nuts into the entire batch of cake. So this will be the one small batch with some nuts inside. So with the one pound of um, flour, butter, and sugar, and the three pounds of Tandy's fruits, we got three nice pans of cake. This one is the one with the walnuts. I'm gonna put these into a 350 degree oven for about 45 to 50 minutes, or until you can get a toothpick to come out clean, then it's done. Remember, everybody oven is different and everybody use different size of baking dish. So please, my timing might be different from some others. So once your toothpick can come out clean, that's all that you need to know that the cake is done. So these are going into my oven now and I'll show you when they're done so two of our cakes are done 45 minutes in the oven i'm just gonna try and i usually try this in the center if it comes clean and it's it is clean that means it's done and i'm gonna try here again and it is done so the bigger one will take a little bit longer i will take it out in another 15 minutes or so so I'm gonna add some wine on these ones while they're still hot. And then we will take them out about 10 to 12 minutes once they cool down a little. So after 10 minutes, I'm gonna take the cakes out of the pan. Oops, nice. And then they are perfectly done. So we're gonna add some fruity wine on the cake and I have here some wild vine blackberry um, flavor and this is very very fruity so it's gonna keep this cake nice moist and preserved for us and once you're using wine or rum in the cake these cake can last as long as one year if it can stay in your house my house it wouldn't stay because we're all big fans of black cake so just a little bit to keep this cake nice and moist and then you can leave it to sit out so it can get completely cold before you cut it it's best serve when it's cold or a few days old so i'm gonna take out the other one now out goes the other one and this one here is also done very nicely you can see it is still hot and steam is still coming out so I'm gonna soak this one and if you like the cake to be on a very very um, whiny flavor or rum flavor you can keep soaking the cake every day little by little and you'll get that strong rum or wine flavor usually when I soak mine now I don't soak it back again because this is enough for us. So I'm gonna let it sit on the side until it's completely cold. And by then the other one should finish. 
so the last and final cake is done after one hour and 15 minutes let us test this one out and this is also done perfectly i will let it sit in the pan for about 10 minutes and then i will take it out and soak it up with some wild vine blackberry wine flavor so now we're gonna take out the final cake from the pan and let's see the bottom is hot wait let me just turn this over Ow. Yep. this one is done very nice as well steaming steaming hot so I'm gonna put some wine on this one. You can put any wine of your choice. I like to put the fruity wine. So it can bring out a nice flavor in the cake. And we're gonna left this one here as well to sit until all the wine is well soaked in and the cake is nice and cold before we cut it. So here is our black cake and this is done real Guyanese style with the back home tandies, carambola or five finger fruits. So we're gonna dig in and taste how this, how the flavor is because this is the first time I'm making with the Tandy's fruits as well. And this is a rum cake. So the way I'm cutting it, I can tell it is done perfectly well. And I can't wait to dig in here because I am a big fan of black cake or Christmas cake. Whichever one you like to call it. So I need my point here and look at that baby. Oh my goodness. That is one good looking piece of cake. So this is how beautiful the cake is. Nice and moist in the inside. And you can see the fruit is chunky and really coming through for this cake. I am very, very happy with the results. So the one pound of black cake, I got three different pans of cake and I have my piece here for me to dig in and to all my friends who enjoy their Christmas rum cake, this one is the Christmas rum cake and I'm going to do my taste test here now and I want, really want to take a nice piece. So my big nice bite for all my friends who enjoy the Christmas black cake or rum cake. This is your mouthful, cheers. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. This is my favorite Christmas cake, black cake. And um, this one is amazing. I have to take another mouthful. It is nice, it is rich, it is a nice, beautiful texture in there and you can taste that winey flavor coming through this is just a satisfying piece of black cake mm -mm -mm. so hope you guys enjoy the recipe if you do please give me a thumbs up if you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet i hope you'll consider subscribing until then I want to say to you guys, stay blessed, stay safe. I love you guys. Bye for now.